But this is a celebration of what we call here in Thompson, McDuffie County, Wall of Fame, which is the equivalent to what we, the Hall of Fame. And it's for those that they identified that have did something outstanding sports-wise, athletic-wise, and I was selected. And what we're doing here now, this is just a meet and greet for family, friends, my church families here. And we want to give them an opportunity to fellowship with us before the banquet actually started. But we didn't want to become some distance away and not have some time to, you know, meet and greet and fellowship one with the other. I'm fascinated by the strategy of the game. In addition to enjoying the aesthetics of watching it, the strategy of plotting and planning and putting your, your pieces on the board against somebody else. I didn't play basketball, but yet I'm a head coach in basketball. I didn't really apply for this job. I was recommended, and yet I got the job. I got the job with zero years of coaching experience. So I didn't do any of this because of me. I did all of it because of him. Michael and I came to Thompson High School the same year, in 1982. He came from his native Jenkins County after he served as a volunteer coach there. I, I, I can relate. I served as a volunteer coach at Wrens my first year. Um, then the principal came and said, uh, Coach, we, 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 we got some money for you. I said, well, good. <laughs> and he gave me a check for $188. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, Dr. Hobbs, why $188? He said, well, they got you for $12 teaching retirement. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I guess that was probably about what I was worth. But uh, uh, <laughs> Coach Thomas probably never would have left Jenkins County, except they said they didn't have any money to pay him the next year. So their loss was our gain, because here he comes in 1982, and he's been here ever since. Um, and he came here to, to teach health and PE, Coach running backs in football, be the head boys basketball coach, and in his spare time, he coached girls track. Hmm. Now, he will also testify that we didn't make a whole lot of money coaching back then, hmm. but it was at least more than Jenkins County had made. Hmm. <laughs> um, in fact, our superintendent at the time, he was a new superintendent, and I even remember he told me, and Michael will remember this, our coaching supplements are abysmal. <laughs> <laughs> and so it did finally get a little better. He went from not only coaching running backs, but he became the offensive coordinator. And he continued in that role for Coach Welsh. And a lot of folks have forgotten, you know, this is most of basketball, but he was a dang good football coach, folks. He, he was here for nine years as our offensive coordinator. Uh, our record during that nine-year period was 93-23-1. and one. Five region championships three region runner-ups, and two state championships. And, and I can promise you, we got to know each other real well then. Philip mentioned that Coach Leroy had uh, uh, two assistants. Well, things had, changed, had improved a lot after Coach Welsh got here. He had three assistants. And we, uh, we had four varsity assistants, so we got to know each other real well. We all had uh, certain roles to play, and Mike, I was as I was, you know, practicing a little bit, going over this, I wonder how many ankles did you take? Wow. Because <laughs> we all had certain duties, and he was he was the trainer, and, and taped all the ankles, and uh, I washed all the clothes. Um, anyway, we spent a lot of long hours together in those days, and uh, the thing about it is we were both in our 20s, at the time, believe it or not. And Mike, I wonder, we, we didn't even realize how much fun we were having. That's we? right, that's right. All we knew is how long we were working. Yeah. And uh, here's something else I remember about Mike. If you, if you knew Coach Welsh and Coach Claude Powell and myself, we could get a little excited on the sidelines. <laughs> and there's Coach Thomas, 
always calm under pressure. Now, I don't know what was going on inside, but he was always calm under pressure. And later, the kids started calling him Cool T. And it's still up. And he is, he, on the, coaching football. Now, I've seen him get a little more excited on the in basketball, but coaching, coaching football, he was, he was, uh, he was the calm one of our group. You know, I hated when Mike uh, gave up football. And that was a selfish thing because he was so good at it. And we had a good thing going on. But I, but I had sense enough to realize this man is going, we're starting football practice at the end of July. And we, and you know, we, we had quite a run there. We're, we're practicing football into December every year. And he's overlapping that with coaching basketball. And he's dang good in basketball. And he's coaching basketball in March. He had to have some time with his family, you know, when those kids when those kids came along, and you know, he he so he made the great the right decision. Uh, I hated it at the time, but I understood it. And you know, his success as a boys basketball coach since 1982. Are you kidding me? 36 years. I'm gonna tell you right now. Nobody's breaking that record. <laughs> Nobody's going to coach the Thompson High School 36 years. I, I've seen people in my last 36 days. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, but he, uh, I mean, his, his, his record, that record's not going to be broken. Over 600 wins, 30 state playoff appearances, eight region titles. And i got to footnote that a little bit. You know, for a lot of our time coaching together, we played in that uh, region with those Augusta schools. And frankly, we would, for the most part, in football, we would beat those Augusta schools like cornbread batter. Mm. I mean, and, and, and people would say, y'all got an easy schedule. And well, you know, we couldn't help who we were playing, but the direct opposite was true in basketball. Mm -hmm. He was lining it up against some of the best teams in the state in our region every year. And so to win eight region championships against that kind of competition is probably not appreciated like it ought to be. But he had eight, uh, he made the elite eight, uh, eight times, two final four appearances, eight times region coach of the year, two times state all-star coach, and last but certainly not least, and I want you to listen to this, over 100 of our young men have been able to further their academic careers because of Michael Thompson. And some of them are here tonight. Now, yes, they got to play basketball in college, but Coach Thomas will tell you, basketball is temporary. All of this temporary. Get that education. And so those guys got an opportunity because of his basketball program. And folks, you don't last this long, 36 years in this profession without having a lot of faith and a lot of resolve. And one thing that I've always noticed about Michael is he was his own man. He was determined to do what he thought was right. And like all coaches, you know, everybody, everybody wants to be a coach on game day. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants the rest of it. Mm. But he's dealt with players that thought they should have got more playing time. He's dealt with unhappy parents and unhappy fans and people who think they know and they don't. <laughs> and he has used patience and tough love with young men who a lot of people would have just cast aside. <coughs> And he's done what he thought was right for that young man, regardless of what a lot of other people thought. He wasn't throwing the baby out with the bathwater, folks. He saved a lot of them. You can't save them all, but he saved a lot of them because of his patience with them. Oh, he would punish them. They paid a price. But I promise you, he did the right thing. He did what he thought was right. And he coaches his team the same way. He runs his system. He teaches role play, waiting your turn, and teamwork. And you know, that's a hard thing to teach in today's world. Waiting your turn, mm -hmm. and teamwork, and playing your role. 
You know, we had some, you know, he, when he called to ask me to do this, we had a conversation a, about some of the guys that played for him over the years. Some of them could throw a BB in the ocean, <laughs> but they could play some defense. <laughs> and they played the role on that team. And folks, I think the proof's in the pudding for this enormous success. And I'm proud to call Michael Thomas my friend and my colleague. And I don't think there's anybody here outside of his wonderful family that takes greater joy in him being honored tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Coach Michael Thomas. First and foremost, we want to give honor to God for the maker and creator of all things. That he is the one who we move and have our being. I'm grateful to him for all of his many blessings, and I'm fully aware that it's only because of him that I stand before you tonight uh, being inducted in something called a wall of fame. And certainly I will make mention of a lot of people and a lot of things, but I'm fully aware that it's only because of him that's I'm, that I'm being inducted, not because of my great efforts or any of those other things. So this is why I give him all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, because I realize that certainly with him we can do all things, but by the same token, without him, you can do nothing. So. Uh, this is why we, we give him the praise. And two, uh, as I acknowledge, uh, Jade, the pastor of this church, and to my pastor, Reverend Favors, to uh, any and all administrators or board members that may be, former board members that may be in our audience, uh, to my principal, Mr. Robinson, my athletic director and county AD, uh, Mr. Gunny Dunn and Mr. Cecil Strong. Uh, we say thank you to them for the opportunity that they have afforded me. To the Booster Club, under the leadership of Jay Poston, who's doing an outstanding job and whom I have the most respect for and to the committee, the Wall of Fame committee, uh, I want to say thank you for uh, inducting me and thank you for accepting the recommendation of, I believe it was Coach John Barnett at this time. To my fellow honorees and to those that have come, gone before this class uh, that are here tonight, to uh, my churches that I pastor, Galilee and the Piney Grove church family, to my membership church family, Springfield, to uh, all that helped to make up this congregation. We are we're grateful to God for the opportunity. I want to say thank you to Coach John Barnett for all the kind words that he has spoken on my behalf. Uh, it may appear that he was the second choice, but as I explained to him, he really was the first choice. Uh, when he... I just like being the last choice. Oh, that's all right. When he uh, made me aware that I had been selected, my initial uh, uh, mind was to allow him to do it, but I was mindful of my mentor that has uh, brought me into the coaching 
uh, fraternity, if you will, and that was my coach, uh, Mike Morrison. And I did not want to overlook him uh, at such a uh, prestigious honor. So I, I did not select him originally, but I went with the one that was a little older and the one that had brought me in, which was Coach Mike Morrison, where as things would have it, he couldn't make it. Uh, he certainly sends his regret, and we, he and I talked back and forth for about two weeks with him trying to make it. Uh, and then finally he just told me he wasn't going to be able to make it. And then, so I really wound up back with my first choice. So I want to say to Coach Barnett, thank you for everything that you've said and, and the friend that you've been over the years. And uh, Coach Barnett, uh, I was at his induction ceremony last year. Certainly he's a, a fine uh, candidate for the Wall of Fame in his own right. I've uh, always respected what he did because uh, like I would like to think myself, he's, he was one of the few coaches that could take kids that others say was undisciplined and he could make them be disciplined. He could take those that others would call lazy and he could make them work hard. He could take those that was not your normal choir boys and make them behave. And I'm still of the old school, I call that coaching. And that's what he was able to do over the years. And, and I, I, I realized that uh, and I thank him because I understand he was very adamant that we be inducted this year. And, and being that he had worked with me, no doubt he was uh, able to share some things that others on that committee was not privy to. And so I say to him, thank you. Uh, I would just like, to, as I stand here, I would just like to just uh, talk about how I got here. And as I look around at uh, this prestigious honor, uh, the, the phrase that I would throw out is how I got here. And I would want to say uh, how I got here up to this point, because I'd like to think my semen is still wet. <laughs> uh, I started out, as he said, volunteering in Jenkins County under the leadership and tutelage of Coach Billy Bill alongside Gene Walker and Coach Ford and some others. And uh, as he, he had it right as a volunteer because they said they didn't have a spot and they didn't have any money. But I never did it for the money anyway. And I just kind of always believed that your gift will make room for you and cause you to come before great men. So, I did what I did for the love of the game, and I just let everything else take care of itself. But anyway, I, I volunteered and I coached, and I coached football there. And coach Mike Marsden was the head JV football coach that I was working alongside, and he asked, suggested, told, whatever you want to say, that, that I would come and help him in basketball once football was over. So evidently, he saw something in my coaching football that he thought would be beneficial in basketball. Sometimes others can see things in you you don't see yourself. And so uh, he didn't let the fact that I didn't play basketball dissuade him from uh, observing what quote unquote talents he saw in me. So anyway, I, I helped him coach basketball and learn uh, the basics of basketball from him. And, and a lot of what we do now is what he taught me. And certainly over the years, you adjust, you tweak, you do things uh, uh, according to uh, how the situation dictates. But the basics of what I learned, I learned from him. So that's why, even though he's not here, I want to make sure I give him the credit, where he was a legend in his own right. Uh, for And sometimes when we do get to certain places, we don't, we don't credit those that got us there. And so sometimes you don't stay where God put you because you don't credit those that help get you there. But anyway, uh, I helped them. And then the job the coaching position came open in Thompson for assistant football. And uh, 
Kid Boys Basketball, and Coach Morrison uh, recommended me from what I understand. And Mr. Smith, who's here tonight, and Coach Bill Reese, which was the athletic director, they hired me. And I, I take my head off, uh, like I told Mr. Smith again tonight, to him for, uh, for hiring and uh, being as supportive as he was. Uh, certainly Mr. Smith was one that held us accountable. But one thing you didn't ever have to worry about was whether or not he'll support you. Now he may cut you a new one behind doors, but he will support you out front. And so I, I, I want to say to him, thank you for, for, for the hire here, man, uh, Coach Reese. Uh, so being that I was uh, volunteering, technically I was not a coach in Jenkins County. So I got hired for a coaching position without coaching experience. I got hired to be a head coach in a sport I didn't play. I got hired in a position that I never applied for. I was recommended. And First Baptist, I tell my folks, that's when you know God is in it. When you get promoted to a position that's beyond your experience. When you get elevated to a level that's beyond your expertise. And when your level of success exceeds your level of training, that's when you know God is in it. Therefore, I never get the big head because I fully realize I am what I am by the grace of God. I can't mention Coach Morrison without mentioning Coach Ford, who's here tonight. Coach Ford coached me in high school, and then I coached alongside of him once I finished college. But Coach Ford was instrumental in me receiving my education, instrumental in me attending Savannah State, and so forth and so on. And even after I uh, became a coach, we were still at times taught basketball because he, he, he's always helped me. But he was instrumental because one summer, uh, well, it was the summer after my senior year, he called and asked where was I going to school. And I guess I took a little too long to answer. And he said, well, I want you to go to Savannah State. I've already called the coach. He's already uh, agreed to give you the scholarship. And this is what you're going to do. This is how it's going to work. Da, 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 da. I'm going to bring the papers by. You turn them in. <laughs> so the coach at Savannah State gave me a scholarship, having never met me, but it gave the scholarship based on the recommendation of somebody else. Somebody said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And certainly when I got there, everything was just as Coach Ford had said and just as the uh, college coach had promised. Uh, a lot of the difficulties that uh, go along with being in school, uh, I didn't experience those, certainly from a financial standpoint because he, they took care of me, Coach Ford, like you said. So in essence, in now looking back on that, what God had did was use Coach Ford to go ahead of me and help make the crooked road straight, the rough places smooth, and make the hills be made low and exalt my valley. So I say to Coach Ford, thank you for all that you've done and still do. And I'm glad that you were able to uh, come and be a part of what's taking place here tonight. It certainly means a lot to me. I realize it was not necessarily a short trip, but nevertheless, you made it. So thank you.
still talking about how I got here. I got here not only because of Coach Morrison and Coach Ford, but I got here because of uh, my family, two loving parents that helped establish in me my belief in God, as well as my core values. And I found out that even uh, as I have grown and, and am older now, that the same old-fashioned values that they taught me out on Thomas Road in Jenkins County have served me well in Thompson, Georgia, and in McDuffie County. It still works. Not only my parents, but my family, many of them are here today, that have done nothing but encourage and support me to be all that I can be. And that was always every, you know, and, and our family is always, everybody's encouraged to be all that you can be. And so I want to thank them and for, for that encouragement and support. And I'm here because of them. Uh, we certainly have to make mention of my older sister, uh, Johnny May, uh, that uh, took me to school first grade at four years old. And uh, not only that, uh, because even at that tender age, having a, a, a yearning for sports would ask her to take me to the football game and take me to the basketball game. And that probably really wasn't her thing. She's not really that into sport. <laughs> but because I asked her, and she kind of took me under her wing, she would take me and allow me to go. And, and, and maybe she saw that there was a, a passion in me at four years old that maybe I didn't even know I had myself. And while the other little boys would be out playing tag football while the football game was going on, I, I would sit in the stands and watch the game. While the other little boys at basketball game was in the concession stand buying popcorn, I would sit and watch the game. And I was telling a uh, video talk for here uh, tonight that looking back on it, it seemed like Reverend Grant, I understood it at four years old, the objective of the game, that is. Uh, so, but I want to say to her, thank her for not squelching that passion because she didn't have the passion, but she still encouraged me. And I'm here standing with her in my presence, perhaps because of that. Uh, certainly would have to make mention of my older brother Reverend Dr. James Thomas, uh, who, when I was born, and he was only a child himself, prophesied that I would be something in sports. And so um, it kind of happened just like he said, and, and uh, here I am tonight. So I thank all of my siblings. I just bring those two out in particular, but all of my siblings in their own way have encouraged me uh, to be the very best that I could be. Not only family, but certainly my immediate family. I'm talking about Michael, Michaela, and Liz. And I'm standing here, but they're the ones that's in the background that's really undergirded this whole effort for these 36 plus years. Uh, they are the ones that, uh, that really helped drive this whole train. And um, I say that even though I'm the one being recognized, we view this as a family affair. Yeah. It may be my likeness, my likeness on the wall, but when they go by and they see it, they're going to realize that, that they are there as well. And uh, they have been nothing but supportive. And those of you that have been around Thompson and Thompson basketball, you realize that uh, since they were about four years old, they've been uh, with Thompson basketball in some capacity. And even to this day, even though they're grown, they graduated from college, and they got their own lives, and they're doing their own things. But on Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, if they can make it, they're going to be around Thompson basketball or calling in to find out what's going 
what's going on. And certainly, uh, uh, would have to applaud my son, Michael. Uh, he has his own career and is doing well, but he still finds the time to, to scout when games are up in his area, still finds the time to keep everything up on the internet for me, still finds the time to make uh, uh, highlight videos for players and send them off so that we can get them into college, Coach Barnett. So he still finds the time to, to, to play an intricate part in uh, Thompson basketball. And he's been that way from, like I said, from a very young age. And he's gone through everything that we do from summer camps that hold nine yards. And there's nobody that knows any more about Thompson basketball, the ins and outs, than Michael Thomas Jr. Certainly, uh, Michaela, uh, you still see her around because she's in the area more frequently than you, than you see Michael. But Michaela uh, has been involved in every aspect of Thompson basketball as well. Uh, she's cheered. She's been a manager. She's been a statistician. She's whatever it is that we've needed her to, her to do, she's done it. And I remember uh, being at Michael when he got old enough to start going to team camp with us. Uh, she always asked, could she go? And I said, you can't go, you, you're not old enough. And uh, not thinking she was going to remember that when she got old enough. <laughs> but sure enough, when she became of age, she reminded me when that summer came around, Daddy, you said when I get old enough that I can go with y'all to team camp. Well, Michael was a boy. <laughs> But Reverend Favors, I could not go back <laughs> on what I had promised. So I forget what grade she was in, but it was, she was small. There was Thompson Boys Basketball registering at the University of Georgia team camp with Michaela as a manager. <laughs> Uh, and if any of you all have ever seen the movie Remember the Titans, yes. the little daughter of the coach, yes. that's her. Yes. So uh, my, my family is special, but, but certainly uh, I would have to give the bulk of the credit to my wife, Liz, who, 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 who juggles all of our schedules. And even to this day, with them being grown and on their own, I guarantee you she knows all of our schedules <laughs> and can call each of us and let us know where we're supposed to be and when we're supposed to be there. And I have to applaud her because uh, she, I said like this, she allowed me to do what was necessary to be standing here. She did not put time restraints on my work because she realized I don't work on the clock. From Coach Woods, you work until it gets done. And so uh, I never felt the pressure that I had to be here, there, do this, that, or the other if I didn't have to. Because in essence, what she said, you do what you need to do, and I got this. Meaning the home, the children, and, and whatever else that needs to be done. Certainly we want to, we always try to, yes, give up a <laughs> Certainly we always want to carry out our responsibility as a father, but in those times when it, uh, my career caused me to do something different, then she always was able to, to step in and make it all work, make it all work. And uh, you have to wonder how she, she does that, but, but she's, she's been able to do that. So we're grateful to her and all that she's done. And so my, my family is very, very special. Somebody said you can tell how special someone is to you by how much their opinion of you matters. Say that again. 
They say you can tell how special someone is to you by how much their opinion of you matters. If that's the case, then they're very, 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 very special to me because their opinion of me is the only one that matters. I can't go on talking about how I got here without mentioning those that have gone before, that have passed on, but we don't forget them whose shoulders we stand on now. And we, in Thompson basketball, uh, being their dogs, old, old bulldogs that's gone on, we call them, they be doggone. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that on you. <laughs> Players that have gone on that has helped to, to build what we have here, Carlos Gibson, and I call it a role because uh, we won't ever forget Charles Tides, managers, Rodney Vesey, yes. Troy Miles. That would, those two would do whatever was necessary, tireless hours. In fact, Troy, after he graduated, still helped pick the managers. He would say, Coach, this is a good one. You need to look at him. Uh, because he was, he, Thompson basketball meant that much to him. Uh, coaches that's gone on. You mentioned Larry Wiley, good friend. Uh, Art Holloway. Art Holloway, uh, I want to say social studies teacher, that came and said, Coach, I don't know nothing about basketball, but tell me what you want me to do to, as an assistant, and I'll do it, and he did. Uh, former coach, former coach before me, <laughs> Willie Williams. Willie Williams, give him a, yeah. I make mention of Willie Williams because he was in a unique position. He was the coach before I got here. So he had an opportunity to either make it easy or make it hard. He was still in the system. He was an administrator. So, uh, but from him, I got nothing but support. He encouraged the players, when I first got here, to do what Coach Thomas said, give him good effort. He would be at all our games. He would be rooting us on. He even got a tech <laughs> in the stands watching, watching our game, arguing with the referee, <laughs> Willie Williams. Uh, clock operator, James Tyson. We called a roll because they meant that much to us. Why? You said, what's, what's the clock operator got to do? Well, all I know is when we were ahead, the clock ran fast. <laughs> if we were behind, the clock ran slow. James Tyson, clock keeper. And then two uh, of my biggest supporters, Mr. Clement Pop Douglas and Mr. Arthur Big Daddy Green. I can't uh, stand here and accept this and not mention those names that's gone on. Uh, they be doggone because they did a, a tremendous amount. Uh, Mr. Pop, Big Daddy, behind the scenes, helping kids get to camp, behind the scenes, helping buy kids shoes, behind the scenes, paying for SAT scores and so forth and so on. And, and wherever we went, they were there. And uh, they, are, they are a large part of why we're here. When we're talking about how I got here, instead certainly we want to thank all of those uh, supporters that I certainly can't call by name, but I will mention Ms. Snead and Miss Lee and uh, Anthony Tut, yeah, because their children have graduated, long since graduated. They don't, they, you know, they could uh, very well just by the wayside, but whatever it is we need, uh, we can 
pick up the phone and give them a call and say, we need this, we need this. The kids need some food, they need pregame meal, whatever. And somehow or another, they just make it happen. And I, I'm appreciative of them. I, I, I have to mention uh, Mr. Donnie McNair of Papa's Finest because he was helping before it was a Papa's Finest. And he did a lot for us then uh, that he would not dare even let us uh, give him credit for back then. But being that I got the mic now, I'll say it, Mr. Donnie McNair and, and their family did a whole lot for Thompson basketball. And of course then, my church family, Springfield Baptist Church family. And they've gone above and beyond in helping in so many, many ways. Uh, not just from a spiritual standpoint, but also from a monetary standpoint. Uh, they, they, they've been there for us. And then, of course, our fans that have cheered us on, our parents uh, who allowed us to coach their sons that did not, quote, unquote, interfere, but basically said, Coach, you do what you think you need to do and I support you. And those parents helped make this program, the Thompson basketball program, what it was because they allowed us, they freed our hand to coach. And when the player or the child knows that, then they, they fall in line because they know they have no recourse. And it helps make a better player. <laughs> Certainly last but not least, we stand here talking about how I got here, the players. My hat goes off to them uh, because they're the ones that actually played in the games. They're the ones that won the championship. They're the ones that went through the practices. They're the ones that ran the wind sprints. They're the ones that did all those things that were necessary to be successful. And God certainly has blessed us with a lot of talent. Uh, yet, by the same token, I think the success came because Number one, they listened. Uh, we were been, been blessed to have a group, for the most part, that listened, that believed in what we were selling. They bought in, and they allowed us as coaches to perhaps to push them to a level they didn't even know that they could go themselves. And so I, I take my hat off to the players, and many of them are here tonight that, that did uh, uh, allow me to coach them, allow me to push them, allow me to challenge them. And I would have to say, uh, for the most part, the majority of these years, uh, they play with a fearless confidence. And they would, what we say in coaching for vernacular, they would just flat out get after it and go win the games anyway. Uh, there were sometimes I knew I was asking them to do things that they may not be able to do, but they tried to do it anyway. And a lot of times, because they thought they could, they did. <laughs> Certainly, uh, we, 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 we uh, talking about how I got here, we got here because of a lot of things that I've mentioned already. But we also got here in spite of some things. And I think it's just as important to mention the things that you had to overcome as it is to mention the things that caused you to have the success. Because if you don't mention the things that you had to overcome, then we could get the false idea that this was easy. If you, I'll say it like this to substantiate, if you only mention what it was that caused you to succeed with, without mentioning the obstacles, Reverend Faith, that would be like a preacher preaching heaven and not going by the cross. That would be preaching salvation without the sacrifice. And if you do that, you shock chain Jesus and you cheapen the cross. Wow. 
So we got here because of a lot of things, but we also got here in spite of some things. We got here in spite of not always having the support that we from folks that were in supporting positions. But we're here. We got here by not always having quote unquote certified assistant coaches. A lot of my staff has been made up of former players that did like I did, volunteered and with a no pay or became a community coach, which meant they, they would leave their day job and then come help me in the afternoon. And they did it because they had a, not only a love for me, but a love for the program. They had too much love to let me do it by myself. We have one back in now, my top assistant, Darrell Crawford, that started out as a, as a volunteer coach, then became a community coach, and now he's a certified coach. We got here not only because of support, but we got here in spite of the sabotage efforts of some that would tell my players not to play basketball. But because of their allegiance to me, they would tell me that and tell me who said it and play anyway. We got here in spite of not having deep pocket boosters that we could pull from, a budge in budgets that we can draw from. This program has been supported by the widow's might. Those of meager means, those of inadequate resources, those of low and fixed incomes, been supported by single parents that work two jobs and just to make ends meet and working two jobs and then have to make a down payment on that child going to camp. Can't pay it all at one time, make a down payment on their shoe. Uh, uh, this is how this, how this program has been supported. And those with little have, have made the donations to our program because they believe what we were doing. And even though the dollar amount was not much, but somehow or another, whatever we needed, when we needed, we had it. Somehow or another, that little bit was able to stretch and be more. Somehow or another, for 36 years, our barrel of meal never got empty. And our crews of oil has never run dry. So when I stand here tonight and look back where we came from, when I stand here tonight and look at the obstacles we had to overcome, when we stand here tonight and look at those that gave their last, their least, and the loss of it, I have to be grateful to God. God bless you. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Man, please. That's all we say, man. Uh-oh. All right. Thank you. Thank you.